cataractcoach.com, in planning a toric lens here, a Mendez gauge is placed and lined up appropriately, and the steep axis of the astigmatism is marked. In this case, it's the 0 or 180 degree meridian. The cystotome is used to make partial depth punctures in the cornea at that axis. I find that these puncture marks stay very well. They don't wash off or bleed like ink marks may. And they're also unobtrusive. It's simple enough then to line up the three dots of the torque lens with the three dots that are made on the cornea. So paresthesis is made and the eye is going to be filled with anesthetic and then viscoelastic. Now this is an unusual eye. It's unusual because the eyes had a prior pars plane of vitrectomy for a regmatogenous retinal detachment due to the patient's high myopia. There is the keratome, diamond keratome, being used to make the phaco incision. You note that we make the incision on the steep axis as well. This way, we are not going to change the axis of the astigmatism at all. Poking in with our forceps, we're going to create a round capsular axis of approximately 5 millimeters in diameter. This is a very myopic eye, very low IOL power. The IOL power is six diopters with a small amount of torque correction. And here's our caps rexus. Notice that we center the rexus on the visual axis because that's where we're going to center the torque lens. A little higher dissection is going to be performed now. Now the challenge in a myopic eye and some higher delineation there the challenge in a very myopic eye is that the AC can become overly deep, and that's also true in a vitrectomized eye. This eye has both. So by prolapsing the nucleus like this out of the capsular bag, and remember, with a deep AC, there's plenty of room, we're going to have an easier time accessing the nucleus for removal. So the phago probe is placed in the eye, and the AC becomes very deep, often with a reverse pupillary block, the cataract nucleus is still easily accessible at the iris plane. There's an initial chop and sub-chop, and now the piece can be aspirated down with a little bit of phaco ultrasound energy used to expedite that. The key, of course, is making the first chop at the very beginning, because that breaks the cataract into two pieces, which are easily managed. Here's the second half of the cataract, chopped again, little piece taken off. We can aspirate that down. Here comes the last piece, Chopper in a protective position. Want to avoid touching the capsular bag here. So we'll take out all the cataract pieces. That looks great. Very careful in these eyes. We don't want to have the AC flatten too much. So here it stays relatively deep between um, changing out to the IA probe. And sometimes people suspect that the barotrauma or change in the pressure may be related to putting tra traction or pressure on the vitreous base. In this eye, of course, there is no vitreous base. The entire vit vitreous has been removed with the prior vitrectomy. Taking out the cortex, circumferential manner. And again, the nice part here is there's certainly no vitreous that can prolapse in case of a capsular bag break, but we want to have an intact bag because we're putting a toric lens in. In the U.S., we do not have an option for a toric lens that fits in the sulcus. So uh, the uh, capsular bag looks nice and clean. Put some viscoelastic in here. Some of those opacities that we see are just trapped in the viscoelastic. And when we take out the viscoelastic at the very end, we'll see, we'll see those are be, will be removed. Toric lens have been loaded up into the injector. We'll place that here inside the eye and deliver it within the capsular bag. Now we know our steep axis is 180 degrees. The torque lens, the torque power is lined up at the haptic optic junction. We rotate the lens so that the lens can then be dialed clockwise. This torque lens is best dialed clockwise. Going under the eye well, this is a critical step to go under the eye well to remove the viscoelastic. Do not leave viscoelastic behind the eye well. That will cause the eye well to slip. The viscoelastic will increase that uh, lubricity, if you will, decrease the friction and allow the lens to slip. Removing the rest of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber, 
that looks great. You can easily see the toric marks on the lens as well as on the cornea that we made with the cisatome. So that lens is beautifully centered, we like that. We're gonna use the chopper now. The FACO probe is gone, this is the IA probe. The IA probe is in position one. We rotate the lens using the IA probe to keep the eye inflated and we line it up exactly where we want it. We'll line up the Purkinje images as well to make sure that we're not having any parallax and that's beautifully lined up. Perfect, we have the lens exactly where we want it so we'll seal up the incision here. Also note that the capsorexis does overlap the optic appropriately. That looks great. And do the same, sealing up the paracentesis, but first let's make sure the lens is positioned exactly where we want it. So thank you for watching this case of a myopic cataract in an hour of the prior vitrectomy.